Hello, this is Dr. Brooke Goldner from Goodbye Lupus, and I just wanted to check in with you guys on what we currently know about COVID-19 coronavirus as of today, May 11th, 2020. So there are now over 14,000 papers that have been published by the World Health Organization on the coronavirus, and yet we are still learning. It turns out that as much as we thought of this as a respiratory virus early on, it doesn't really act that way. We are now seeing that people don't just show up with shortness of breath as we originally were projecting, but some people are showing up with actually uh, heart attacks, kidney failure, terrible GI distress where they're having a lot of vomiting or diarrhea. It can show up in many different areas of the body and we're starting to understand why that is. But we still don't yet have a treatment or a vaccine that we could tell you is going to end this right now. It really worries me to see that states are opening up again, even though we don't have access to enough testing to make sure that the people who are coming out are not positive. We don't yet have a treatment that we can reliably say works. Uh, they're still saying a vaccine could be anywhere from one to a few years away. So while there's definitely are some people out there that are essential workers that do need to do their jobs, uh, there are people who cannot afford to stay home. Those of us that can stay home, we still need to because we still yet don't have a way to make sure that we are not spreading this virus. Somebody that used to be my, one of my interns when I was chief resident, he is working at a VA hospital in California. And he said one of the nurses there, he put this on Facebook, that one of the nurses there, her husband just died. He got infected from her because she's a nurse working on the front lines. And because of her hard work saving lives, she was infected, didn't know about it. She lost her husband. There are still so many people dying. Uh, right now in the US, it's considered that we have 1.3 million people who are infected. And we have 78,000 deaths so far in the US. Now, this is most likely an underestimate. We don't have enough testing yet to prove how many people in the US actually have this disease. There was a really chilling study that they did. Well, it wasn't a study, it was a report where they went into a prison that had an outbreak and they finally got testing to this prison. And the prison thought they knew how many people had the illness. And when they tested every single person in the prison, including the people who had no symptoms, it was 30 times more people who had it than they thought. And when I heard that, and I thought about that statistic we have right now of there being 1.3 million people in the US and how possibly it could be up to 30 times more that we're unaware of, it was pretty chilling to me. So we really don't yet know exactly how many people have, but even if that is the amount, realize that that number is because we put into place social distancing and other lockdown measures. Had we not done that, and be exponentially higher. And opening things up now actually puts us back towards being on that curve to making things exponentially higher. So please be aware of that. Uh, I know we all have COVID burnout. I've got it too. I want to go out. I want to do things. But it's not time yet. And I understand the financial strain that it puts in our country. But I'm not a politician. So it's not my job or my strength to figure out how to fix the financial and the economic impact this is happening. As a doctor, the only thing I really can speak to is human health and the toll it takes on human health to reopen and the deaths that are going to happen, uh, so many more deaths than, than we ever could have if we just would stay on lockdown. What we're seeing now is we have some more information I'd like to share with you. So one is we know that the virus uses the uh, ACE2 receptor uh, to bind to your cells. And you have these receptors all over your body, but especially plentifully in the kidneys, the lungs, and the intestines, which is probably why we see a lot of people who are getting symptoms in those areas. But it does a lot of things. It can affect any organ of the body. And so what we're seeing now is people are showing up with many different things. And there was a really cool graphic uh, that from a Washington Post article where they were showing all the different ways uh, that you can, um, you can see this show up. Um, it, it's actually causing inflammation of blood vessels and that can cause anything from stroke uh, to other kinds of serious 
complications. They're now seeing that in children that they might not get the respiratory disease, but there were some deaths of children in New York, three deaths so far, 73 cases, and they were all atypical. And they're having inflammation of their blood vessels that looks like it's autoimmune being triggered by this virus. So it can cause strokes and blood clots and neurological issues in the brain. It can cause pink eye, loss of smell and taste, blood clots, um, vomiting, diarrhea, and of course, the lung issue, shortness of breath, weakened heart muscles, dangerous arrhythmias, heart attacks, kidney failure. There are some hospitals running out of dialysis machines from all the kidney failure. Some people are getting purple fingers and toes from the attack on their blood vessels and a cytokine storm, an attack uh, from the immune system itself. So it's pretty scary, all the different ways it can show up. And still to this day, there is a, a much higher rate of complications in people that are obese and people that have high blood pressure, maybe because of the ACE2 receptor connection, that, that may be the reason. But I think the most important thing we need to realize is that we're not out of the safe zone yet. Even though we're tired of this, uh, we're still all very much at risk. So I hope that you all are staying safe. Continue doing what you need to do in terms of staying home. If you go out, wear full protection. You know, I'm in Texas right now. We reopened and there's no guidelines. People are walking around without masks. I saw we went for we go for drives for our pleasure time and we went for a drive and we saw people going into bars, no masks, sitting next to each other. Extremely dangerous. It made my stomach hurt in anxiety to see that because I know that in a couple of weeks we're going to see a surge of people who are extremely ill. So even if your state is not giving you the guidelines that you need to stay home, please be smart. Please be safe. Um, I know there's a lot of conspiracy videos out there right now as to where this came from. I, I don't think anyone's gonna be able to ferret that out. I mean, we know where, where the scientists are saying it came from, but regardless of any of that, the truth is it's here and there's people dying. A lot of people are dying. Nursing homes, jails, uh, minorities are, are dying at higher rates. Um, and then we've got the frontline workers the, the, the hospital workers, the doctors and nurses on the front lines who are working day in and day out trying to save lives and inundated with more and more patients. I had the honor of having an ICU doctor who was on the front lines of the COVID pandemic who was in my last rapid recovery group. And uh, she was able to do rapid recovery. My six week group, she was able to do rapid recovery for her migraines while still being on the front lines. And it was such an honor to take care of her while she took care of others. But man, what an enormous strain it's been to be able to deal with it. This is much greater than anyone's ever experienced before. My friends that are on the front lines have told me that they've never seen anything like this before. The amount of death and the amount of suffering and seeing people die alone, having to use FaceTime to say goodbye to their friends and family people giving birth by themselves, people dying by themselves. These are really horrible, difficult times, but we can get through it together. We need to stay home. We need to stay safe. We need to stay patient. We need to put pressure on our government representatives to figure out a way to take care of our economy and the poor so that they have the ability to take care of their health. Uh, do what you can to help your neighbor and help each other. And I will keep updating you as we get more information about this horrible pandemic. Remember that you don't need to check in on this all day long. I don't want you to spend all of your time watching the news and getting anxious about it. We need to have the right information to make the right choices and then take the time to do the self-care you need to take care of your spirit, take care of your family. Remember that we're staying home, not because we are under house arrest, but because we are choosing to act as brothers and sisters, taking care of each other, by staying home, right? That's how we take care of each other right now. That's how we protect each other. That's how we love each other is by being patient and staying home. Let the research continue. Let the doctors keep working on finding the treatment that's going to let us come out of this because we need a treatment, right? And once they do, we will get back to living uh, the way that we want to again. But for now, patience and remembering that this is an act of love for all of humanity to take care of each other. And we'll get through this together. I'll keep you updated. I'll see you next time.